So that pretty much uh, is the end of the magic show. And uh, at this point, we've got plenty of time for questions and answers. Uh, of course, we've got the uh, welcome reception in about an hour. So we'll stay as long as uh, you folks want to talk about hybrid, OAE, CLE, or anything in between. So I'll open the floor to questions. Yes, here. So, are, so the, the question is, when you fall back to the CLE portal, what does it look like? So any tools that have been placed in that site through basic LTI or other means would appear, I mean, it's the full CLE portal. So it, it looks just exactly like it would look today um, with tools on the left and the presentation on the right. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I understand the question now. So, right, so any, any content that would live specifically in the OAE, when you switch back to the CLE portal, of course, will be missing. Yeah. But, you know, in terms of, you know, fallback mechanisms, if you're largely depending on those CLE tools for, you know, your bread and butter teaching and learning, then, you know, instructors are still going to be able to get their job done. They may lose some functionality, but at least they won't be, you know, outside your door with the torches and, and uh, forks, right? Other questions? So I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing up here what exactly what the question is. So in the OAE, when you add a widget, a CLE tool as a widget to an OAE content page, right? That's the context? Maybe, maybe that was the, the last thing you were talking about, Steve? Yeah. Oh, so is that the question, What's, what the context is? So, so there's one of the things that I think may need a little bit closer looking at is that in this latest iteration of the user interface, content used to live in groups. And now content can live anywhere, right? It's just sort of this free form piece of content. It doesn't have to be bound tightly anywhere. And so right now, our context, when we do the LTI launch, is that piece of content. So any, any LTI, uh, you know, CLE tools that live within the context of that piece of content will all have the same CLE site. So yeah, so in terms of grades and assignments and all, they'll all interoperate quite nicely. Now as soon as you place tools in different contents in OE, then they'll have different contexts within the CLE. They'll be in different sites, essentially separate sites get provisioned on the CLE side. Chuck has a question. How about when you had it kind of done? Yes. So that would all be in the same context as... Right. So, so the presentation where I had assignments, gradebook, and uh, test and survey on the left in an OAE page, that's right. They would all have the same context. Yes. Question? So, so if you're asking, can you use the tools in the CLE, modify data there, and see that data reflected in the, this, the OAE widget? Okay, so, so just to be clear, when you, when you place a CLE tool as a widget in a particular context, what's happening on the CLE side is it, it basically checks. Um, does this user exist in the system? Yes or no? If no, create the user. Does the site exist? If no, create the site. Does the tool placement exist? If not, create the tool placement. And Chuck is very familiar with this code. Um, so if you remove the widget placement in OAE, nothing happens in the CLE. That tool placement's still there. And if I were to place a new widget with the same tool type in OAE, it would get rebound to that existing CLE tool. And changes made in either place will be reflected in both places. Yes. Great questions. How about David? So the question is, folks have a lot of CLE sites. How do you pick the tool? Is that the question? Well, how do you pick the site? How do you pick the site? So, so it's in reference to the Sakai 2 favorites widget. Is that correct? Ah, OK. Right, right. So. So we're getting into some fairly hairy details of how LTI works. And there's 30,000, but there's a simple answer to this. Okay. The things that live in pages are not reflected in the tabs in the CLE if you go straight to the CLE. They're kind of hidden tabs, right? 
Not necessarily. Those, those sites are visible, and that's something, again, that we may you know, want to make a decision whether or not they're visible. But if I place a, an LTI uh, CLE tool in a page and I log into the CLE portal, I'm going to see that site. Now, the, the larger question I think David's asking is, is really more of what in LTI is called a trusted, a trusted mode. So as I mentioned earlier, LTI is doing all this provisioning of users and sites and tool placements. When you put it in a trusted mode, it does no provisioning whatsoever. And so then the responsibility of provisioning moves somewhere else. And so presumably all of us have some kind of uh, provisioning already in place for the CLE that's creating uh, course sites based on semesters or terms or you know whatever process we already have in place. And more than likely, when you get into this trusted scenario, you would want that provisioning to also provision the same equivalent OAE objects at the same time. So that when you enter a course site, for lack of a better term, in the OAE, and you place, let's say, the gradebook, you know that's, that's the same gradebook that lives in that same exact course site over in the CLE so that maybe later, when you go to upload grades to your SIS system, that it knows the primary keys and all that kind of jazz to get the grades back in the right place. And I would expect, and that's one of the things we've talked about, is maybe one of the next steps for hybrid would be to build in some of this provisioning so that as objects get provisioned in the CLE, they're making those changes in the OAE at the same time, again, because most of us already have CLE provisioning working, and that just you know makes good practical sense. Yes, yes, they're two completely separate instances. So you have a full CLE instance, you know, probably clustered with you know who knows how many servers, and you, well, you guys already have one of those. So you would need to add an OAE instance, which in itself would stand on its own. And then the hybrid is really a decision of, do I want to glue these things together in some way to make them look more like one cohesive system? Right, so the question is, can you upload files into the OAE from the CLE, is that right? So th this is one of the areas uh, where there's been some design work done uh, in terms of moving content between systems. And there is a design, I think it's called Hybrid 4, uh, in Confluence that is mainly to move content out of the CLE and into the OAE. So as Steve was showing earlier, that little, uh, that little add content widget where you're seeing here all content. So if, you, if I click Sakai 2 files, I would see the Sakai 2 files and when I say add them, it would then migrate that particular file or sets of files from the CLE over to the OAE and that's primarily because the permissions models in the two systems, um, it would be hard to reconcile those two things. So by just migrating the content, we can take full advantage of the new permission schemes in the OAE with uh, you know, sort of breaking free of, of the site silos and those kinds of things so that it now becomes a piece of standalone content that you can repurpose in any way you see fit in the OAE. But that's a piece that's not has not been coded yet, but there is some design work around it. Currently, today, as we stand here, the only way you could get content between the two systems would be through SneakerNet. Right? Download the file, upload the file. And of course, that's not that's not a good workflow. So that's why we've done this design work around making something that, that's more approachable. David? If, uh, I would think that if you had content that was particularly open to the public and you had a URL, you could certainly use that URL as a way to, but, point, to point to the content in the other Right, that, that's a great point. So, so it, as David pointed out, if you have content in the CLE that's generally public, you could just point to it and, and you would be good to go through a URL. Um, and even if it's not public, assuming that the users in the OAE would have permissions to the object in the CLE, they're going to be authenticated to both systems, so therefore you could even post a link to a document that requires authentication. 
and via you know single sign-on that should uh, should just download without any further prompts to the user. So the the context and and first of all let me let me say this how the LTI consumers determines its context is super lightweight it's like two or three lines of code so if we want to change the behavior it's not hard but the way the behavior exists today is it looks at the document and goes the OAE content and goes oh okay this is the context I'm in it doesn't matter how many times you place that it still considers that it's its context now there is uh, a provision in there which is based around groups and so the way this uh, context um, resolution works, I believe, and I'd have to go back and look at the code, but it, uh, it will look to see if it's in a group. And if it's been placed in a group, it will use the group as its context. And if it's not in a group, then it falls back to just the context of the individual piece of content. So, so first let me say that it'll work as expected. The real question is whether or not you'll whether they'll all go back to the same instance, the same tool placement in the CLE, and I believe they will unless you're placing that content in different groups. And in that case, it'll use the context of the group as opposed to the individual piece of content. And so if it's the group resolution, then you'll have different CLE placements. And if it resolves to a single piece of content, it would be the same everywhere. That's a really great question, Lynn. And um, I don't have anything in particular to add at this point related to the work that we've done around hybrid. Uh, there has been work done in the CLE community around what's called the entity picker, which essentially allows you to pick an individual thing out of certain tools and embed it as a link. Um, the entity picker is kind of rough, you know, it's, it's kind of nascent, it's kind of a little rough around the edges but um, there's folks that are using it. I believe Open Syllabus is using it as part of their workflow. So I would imagine that building on that entity picker and doing a little bit of refining uh, around it would, could be repurposed in the OAE just in the same way that it's being repurposed for Open Syllabus. Right. So, so the, the question John's asking is, you have a Math 101 site, you don't want LTI provisioning new sites for you. You already have Math 101. And so that's where this, when you, when you configure the LTI provider on the CLE side, you would put it into this trusted mode so it would not create any sites for you. And you can have more than one of those. You could potentially have one LTI provider that would be um, trusted so that it's not doing any provisioning, and then you could have one that's untrusted that would do auto-provisioning, and they'll sit side by side quite happily. And Chuck's shaking his head yes, so I did not just lie. Yeah, so the question is, how do you decide whether they, your users see the OAE portal, the CLE portal, and that's an institutional decision, absolutely. And you could potentially do that, if that made sense for your institution, is allow the user to choose which one they want to go to. Um, in, in our experience, and now I'm you know, putting my Indiana hat back on, you know, when, when you start that rollout and you move out of pilot, it's like you want to start directing your users to one place for training, documentation, all those things that go along with the rollout. So at some point, your institution would say, yes, you know, we're going to move forward. This will be the default. Um, and of course, you've got, you know, I think, some pretty decent fallback plans. Other questions? All right, going once. All right, thank you, everybody. I've, we've, had, we've had a blast, and I'm looking forward to the reception, and uh, enjoy your evening. Thanks, everyone.